There we go. Happy Monday. It is the uh, daily puck drop here at pucksports.com. YouTube, searching Puck Sports, Apple, Spotify, Amazon Music, wherever you find your podcast. Also, uh, it's a brand new thing that I just discovered. I think they just did it. You can also on YouTube, YouTube Music, if you prefer to go that route, really cool new feature that they did. Uh, YouTube Music, you can find Puck Sports there as well. And then on YouTube Music, it allows you to just listen to it and then also watch it at the same time. So it's, first, the Puck Sports is everywhere. We're taking over the media landscape. Also, uh, there are YouTube Shorts that are available up there on YouTube uh, at Puck Sports. You can see like little 20, 30-second clips of the interviews that we've been doing all week long, kind of like the highlights. And then they spit it up all there. It's so funny as a 48-year-old person making YouTube shorts. That's all my son watches, the vampire, are YouTube shorts. And he'll be on his phone and, or his iPad, and he's just, like, flipping through. I'm like, what are you watching? Like, what, what, what is this? YouTube shorts. Boom, 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 boom. And I'm like, your attention span, and he fires through them. Anybody that's got kids, they know what I'm talking about. Us 48-year-olds, we're not really into the YouTube shorts all that much, but I actually kind of – they're pretty damn nice. They're pretty cool. Uh, just like a 30-second sound bite. Uh, gives you kind of the highlights, the best things from the interviews and, and content that we're doing. And then, of course, you can link to uh, have the uh, the full interview at your disposal. I will say this. Uh, thanks to uh, everyone. Last week, one week in. Officially one week in as we finished our uh, first week here at PuckSports.com. It couldn't have gone any better. It was great. So much great content up there. I mean, we. I mean, I'm giving you a ton. I hope you guys all enjoy it. Uh, Rob Staten, the Seahawks draft blog, brought to you by Superior Linen. He was fantastic from Dubai. I don't know where he's going to be this week uh, when we when we we talk to him on Thursday. Mike Garofolo was great as always. Gave you that great little nugget about Sam Howell and the L.A. Rams and how the Rams wanted uh, Sam Howell and how the the Seahawks had to sit there and outbid. Uh, the Rams uh, for Sam Howell. So that was great content. Appreciate uh, Mike joining us. Chris Egan, if you missed Chris Egan on Friday's show, go back and watch that one. That's timeless. But we talked 45, 50 minutes, just about everything. Uh, we went from the uh, youth sports, club sports conversation. His daughter played her final tennis match, uh, collegiate tennis match this past weekend. Shout out to Maddie Egan and just a great career there at Portland State. Uh, we talked about graduation party etiquette. And I think we all can agree with graduation party etiquette. There better be an open bar. I mean, th there better be booze there. Maybe not so much for the kids, uh, but certainly uh, there for uh, the adults. But it feels like I've been doing this for like months. I've been doing basically this for about 22 plus years. But last week was a long week, but it was a fun week. I hope you enjoyed all the content. Jim Duquette, Bill Kruger, John Canzano. God, I hope I don't miss anybody. Brad Adam, Ryan Divish, a pair of visits. I don't know where Divish will be this week. No clue. I can't wait to talk to him on Wednesday. In fact, we may have to start moving it up maybe to a Monday or a Tuesday visit. I mean, he's he's already. We're 10 games into the season. Divish has already given up on Twitter. <laughs> Just are already done based on what happened uh, this past weekend. Uh, there were the M's. So Divish Wednesdays and Fridays. Uh, and then uh, just to everyone, if I miss somebody, I'm sorry. But I do want to hammer this home, and I'll do it right here, and I, I'll post it uh, probably up on, on PuckSports.com. Also on, the, on YouTube, there's a tab below on YouTube. Please leave as many comments and rate it as much as you'd like, please. The comments are great. Uh, they're activated. Thank you for all the people who continue to reach out. I think I did something the other day, and then I put the kids thing back on it, and they're like, hey, it's made for kids again, you moron. So I think once and for all, this putz over here has finally corrected that. But if I haven't, please leave me a message at uh, on the contact tab there at pucksports.com. Puck at pucksports.com is, uh, is just the email you can reach me out. And so I think we've figured that out. But I love the comments, and I try to respond to as many of them as possible. So it's not going to be one of these things where you leave a comment and, like, like if you watch another show or listen to another show and the, the guy never responds or, or the person never responds, I'll, I'll try to respond as many as I as I possibly can. So thank you. Keep those coming. But leave the comments. It's great. It's great to hear feedback. 
and all of that uh, there at uh, YouTube. So we appreciate it. Uh, wherever and however you listen, you can listen just a million different ways. You can consume it a million different ways. And, you know, by the looks of it and the numbers of it, a lot of you are consuming the product. So, I mean, I just blown away, uh, really, really blown away by the numbers that I'm, I'm seeing of people that are downloading the podcast, streaming the podcast and, and watching things and leaving comments. It's, uh, I thought it would be, I thought it'd be good. I was hoping I was, Fingers crossed it was going to be good. Uh, it is, I would say, blown away my expectations. So thank you. Uh, thank you to all the listeners watching and listening. If you're here for the first time, the Daily Puck Drop, we do this every day, Monday through Friday. It drops at 10 a.m. We give you the recap of, of all the events from the previous night, weekend now, because it's a Monday, so there's so much to talk about. And, of course, we preview the top stories coming up uh, today in the world of sports. We try to do it pretty fast. It's, as fast as I can go, I'm slow. I'm a larger man. Uh, we'll try to give you about 25, 30 minutes, and then uh, we'll get you ready for all the content that's coming up this week. And I will just kind of reiterate this and probably mention this as much as I possibly can. Mondays, I just want to let everybody know what we have for our like our regular stuff. Mondays are Jim Duquette, MLB Radio, Sirius XM, Bill Kruger, Root Sports, brought to you by Rise Above Foundation. Tuesdays. Our John Canzano at johncanzano.com, the ball face truth, 750, uh, the game. Wednesdays, Brad Adam, Root Sports, stops on by uh, to talk a little baseball with us. Ryan Divish of the Seattle Times stops by for his sunshine and joy. That's brought to you by Chalet Bowl, chaletbowl.com, the oldest, longest standing bowling alley in the state of Washington. Uh, it was created back in 1941. How about that? Shout out to Reggie and the crew. Uh, Thursdays is our, our, our NFL Thursday as uh, Rob Staten Seahawks draft blog stops on by brought to you by superior linen, uh, Mike Garofolo NFL network also on Thursdays. And then on Friday, we wrap it up with another visit with the human pony cake, Ryan Divish, and then Chris Egan uh, brought to you by fat Zach's pizza, Chris Egan, long time, long time sports anchor at King five, uh, bringing his uh, comedy routine on Friday. So again, that's just the, the lineup. I'll repeat as much as possible so people uh, know what we have coming up in terms of uh, content uh, every single day of this week. And, of course, Monday through Friday, 10 a.m., the Daily Puck Drop, the DPD, uh, will debut. If you'd like to sponsor the DPD, the Daily Puck Drop, hit me up at puck at pucksports.com. Drop me an email. Uh, advertising opportunities, all there. Uh, just uh, hit that contact tab. And, again, puck at pucksports. Dot com. All right, let's get into it. Mariners uh, roughed up in that series against the Brewers. That was just craptastic. Just a real flipping doozy. Uh, it was, I, I mean, from the, the Munoz meltdown who just couldn't find the strike zone. And, yeah, I guess you can blame the, the home plate umpire and he was a call up a triple A and he had a tight strike zone and all that. Bottom, you know, you got to adjust and, and move on. You saw what the strike zone was, throw strikes. Uh, but that was a disaster. I mean, you can lose a lot of ways, like walk off home run, walk off double, what have you. Losing, that was Little League. <laughs> That's like watching my team, uh, Fisher Plumbing, Ballard Little League, losing on a walk with the bases loaded. That was just a gross to watch and Glad they're getting out of Milwaukee. It just it doesn't look good right now uh, for these guys. They're just not playing good baseball uh, all the way around. Uh, the fact is that we're 10 games into the season, and Josh Rojas has pitched twice for you already. <laughs> I mean, that's not what you signed up for, man. Like Josh Rojas pitching twice through the first 10 games of the season is just not a good look. Not a good look for for your organization. So, um, you know, it's so early in the season. I get it. But, boy, they uh, they need to start playing some much cleaner baseball. Much cleaner baseball. If they want to get this and they want to be where they're at. Because right now, they're poor defensively. They're god-awful on offense. And now they're starting pitching, which that's their hallmark that's their calling card is starting pitching and their starting pitching hasn't been good 
I mean, through the first 10 games of the season, they've got a team ERA. The starters at 5-6-3, that's 26 in baseball right now. And I know it's ballooned because of a couple of starts, but the it's it's razor thin, the edge, you know, the line for these guys. Because they they that starting pitching, the way they've developed and constructed this team, that starting pitching has to be damn near great every night. Because that's how they've built the team. And right now, the guys behind them aren't good defensively, but they're not good at they're not good at third base. They're not good at second base. And their outfield took a downgrade when they got rid of Kelman. So their starting pitching is getting let down by their defense. But also the the starters aren't making um have been a little shaky to start the season, especially Castillo. We'll get to Castillo here in a little bit, but uh twenty six in ERA, batting average, a twenty third in baseball, two seventy four. Um the defensive plays, we'll get to that in a second. Big storyline was Bryce Miller over the weekend. They pull him after seven innings. I mean, Scott Service gave like that was like the Bible response to why they they took him out of the game. I understood everything that he said. And 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 honestly, it's one of these things where it makes a lot of sense what he articulated. And and I know the old school person, and and I throw myself in that old school kind of messaging because I thought it too when he came out after what was it 78 pitches through seven innings god can we just get back to a day and age where these guys go nine innings and throw 100 plus pitches and all that and there probably still is a little part of me that that believes that should be the case but boy have you seen all the baseball injuries and in, this year and I don't know if they're all related what have you all these guys are throwing much harder now than they've ever thrown before. Dr. James Andrews over the weekend had an interview where he's talking about he, you know, when he started doing the, you know, the no James, Dr. James Andrews, who does all the, the Tommy John surgeries was saying, God, when we started doing Tommy John surgeries, you know, it was, you know, it's all professional guys, professional pitchers. He says now he's doing more Tommy John surgeries or has seen more Tommy John surgeries in youth pitchers we're talking high school college high school players even younger than high school it's because we are we are in a game of just max out velocity all the time and that's going to be a wear and tear on pitchers elbows uh but you've seen it spencer strider a shane bieber yuri perez loisaga uh jonathan loisaga torn ucl i mean all these guys done done gone so there probably is a little bit of thinking there for scott service protecting bryce miller and i don't mind it actually especially in the beginning of the season so I, i'm not upset about what he did this past weekend with bryce miller he's young they're gonna need him here's a guy that is now just in a second stand in major league baseball he did his job he got you through seven innings you should be able then to turn it over to your bullpen and go eighth ninth i'm not gonna kill scott service for that others may and, and i get it and I do understand that old school approach. We're going to talk to Bill Kruger today, and I bet you Bill Kruger will have a different opinion than mine. At least that's kind of what I think. Uh, but yeah, I'm not going to. I'm not going to kill him for that. Castillo's got to get it going today. He gets the start against uh, Toronto. His first two starts, a uh, six, seven, uh, five ERA. He's given up 16 hits. Uh, it's just has not been good for Luis Castillo. He 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 has that same issue, and Kruger probably will talk about later today, where he gets guys on two strikes and just cannot put them away. And he's got to get that. He's got to get that righted real soon because he's throwing way too many pitches and he's getting up way too many hits. Do want to touch in on the offense? Let's get to the offense and the defense part of the M's here real quick. Offensive numbers through ten, just I mean putrid. I don't know. I don't know how else to describe it. Twenty uh, eighth in OPS, twenty fifth in the amount of home runs they've hit, twenty uh, fifth in runs scored, twenty twenty uh, seventh in baseball. Batting average with runners in scoring position. They're hitting 115. They're striking out the most in baseball, 30th uh, in K percentage. They're 28th in on-base percentage. I mean, part of the reason they made all these off-season moves, really was to save money, uh, was we needed to get better offensively. And we're going to take a hit a little bit defensively. Well, they've taken a major hit defensively, and then they haven't gotten better offensively so far. Uh, defensive plays not being made. You saw it again over this weekend. Bottom of the first inning, Josh Rojas, again, 
that a major league baseball third baseman needs to make that play. Can't make that play, that throw to first. Um, Luke Raley, his late attempt, he's playing over the right field over Mitch Haniger. That attempt on the Bowers hit, he couldn't come up with it. He was late getting to it. It's the little things that are causing the batters to continue to be up there, runs a score, turning over the lineup, all that stuff. Little plays that they were making last year that they're not making this year. And again, it goes back to what I said earlier. It's that that razor-thin margin for these guys. They live on the edges with this starting pitching. If the starting pitching isn't great, they're going to crumble. They're going to play like this. Uh, so, And defensively, they're just not getting helped out right now. And it's going to lead to frustration from uh, the starters. Uh, they got a three-game series that starts with uh, Toronto, Luis Castillo, Jose Barrios today, George Kirby, Chris Bassett uh, coming up on Tuesday, and then Logan Gilbert against our friend Yusei Kikuchi coming up on Wednesday. We talked about all the Major League Baseball injuries. Uh, it's crazy. Bieber, Strider, Perez, Loisaga, uh, all injured, all done for the season. It's crazy. Uh, and I haven't seen anything really like this. There is a lot of thought that in Major League Baseball Players Association coming out, they're blaming the pitch clock. I don't know if it's the pitch clock. I do just think it is a product of everyone wanting to throw so much harder. And it's max out. It's not like, hey, let's empty it here. I've got 98 pitches. Let's let's empty the last five or six or last 10. They are doing it from the get-go. And I just think they've been doing it for a long time. You know, these guys that are younger, they've been doing it from the high school age. I saw a high school kid this week because uh, they were playing against uh, my buddy's team. And I kind of was a little... I don't know what's turned off is the right concerned with this kid was throwing 92. This kid is a stud. I mean, he was, I mean, one of the best, like that I've seen up close and personal here, high school pitchers, but he's clearly their best player. He's throwing about 92 on the gun. He throws over. This is a non-league game. This kid's thrown over a hundred pitches in a non-league game. There's no point. There's there's no reason for that. There's no reason for a high school kid to be touching 100 plus pitches. Then he comes out of the game, and you know where the coach puts him? Shortstop. Why, why would you put him at shortstop? He just threw 100 plus pitches. Now you want him to then feel the ground ball and throw over to. I mean, I, I don't know. But this is the type of stuff these guys and these pitchers. It starts at that level of not being handled properly. And it goes, you know, gets into college, same deal, in the minors, throw harder, 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 velocity, arms are blown out. It's going to be a real concern here, I think, in the next few years. It's starting now, it has been. It's probably only going to get uh, worse. Uh, let's switch gears. Women's national title game. Boy, it was a great first half. First two quarters were great. Then you just saw the, not just the the athleticism, I just thought that the, the uh, physicality, the, the the depth, the size of South Carolina just, you know, took the Iowa girls out. I mean, just just broke their will. Caitlin Clark was about as electric as the first quarter you'll ever see. She was everything. And th that was the thing yesterday is they, they said to Iowa and Caitlin Clark, hey, we'll just, you can get yours, even though they tried to stop her from getting yours but we're just going to bank on your other teammates can't deliver. And Iowa was good, and they're a fundamentally sound basketball team, but what they lack is just that aggressiveness, the physicality, the athleticism that South Carolina possessed. And congratulations to South Carolina. Don Staley, I remember watching Don Staley is, is well, not a kid, but uh, you know when I was in my 20s and watching her play basketball, she was always just a beast. Beast in college, beast in, when she went to professional women's basketball, the Olympics. She's always been a stud. Uh, she's turned into a stud coach. 38-0 needs to be recognized. That is hard. That is hard to do. Go undefeated in any sport at any level. They have won. This is remarkable. They South Carolina has won 109 of their last 112 games. That's ridiculous. And then the other ridiculous uh, note that came out of, not from the national title game, but the viewers – because we'll have the men's game tonight, and everyone's going to be watching. What are the men's? What are the men going to do? So the Iowa UConn game, the semifinals, it peaked at 17 million. It was the most watched basketball game on ESPN ever. Okay, I'll repeat that: the most watched basketball game ever on ESPN. It averaged. It was uh, at 14.2 million viewers. Okay, 
So this is what 14.2 million beat. Okay. Any women's college basketball game ever. Every 2023 NBA finals game. Every 2023 World Series game. The 2023 Big Ten Championship game. The 2023 Cotton Bowl. The 2023 Big 12, or excuse me. Oh, yeah. Big 12 Championship game. The 2023 Pac 12 Championship game. The 2023 ACC Championship game the 23 Peach Bowl, the 23 Masters Final Round, which, God, that sucks, the 23 Daytona 500, the 23 Indy 500, every Tennis Grand Slam Final, men's and women's, and every 2023 college football regular season game except one. That's nuts. That is crazy. That is the effect of what Caitlin Clark and others have had on that sport. And I mean, they should just make a, a damn monument for her of what she did for for that sport. We'll see what the men's can do, what the men can do tonight. UConn and Purdue matchup at 620. Uh, not on CBS. I hate that the fact they don't put this on CBS. It's on TBS, TNT, and True TV. Huskies favored by six and a half. Zach Eady, Donovan Klingon. That's going to be an awesome matchup to watch. Uh, he's a, the big man, Donovan Klingon, for, for UConn. is probably a good matchup and, and can have favorable because he's a little bit more athletic than Zach Eady, but Zach Eady has been great. I love watching him play. So skilled. For his size at 7'4", how he can move and how physical he is, the fact that he can use his left hand as good as he can uh, is great. That Purdue-NC uh, State game was highly boring. Uh, the UConn-Alabama game was a little bit more, but uh should be a fun game tonight, national title game. I doubt it outdraws the women. I would put five bucks on it. There's no way that it does. Uh, uh, Braden Smith, the point guard for Purdue, he's got to be better tonight. Uh, he can't be you know, having half-court violations left and right, and he's got to shoot better, and he's got to be more of a scorer. And take some pressure off Zach Eady and those other guys because UConn is coming for them and they're balanced. They got you know five players that average what twelve points or more on that team. Uh, other college basketball news: John Calipari stepping down. God, it's going to be weird not seeing John Calipari in Kentucky blue, but he's going to Arkansas, and so now Kentucky will turn the, uh, their attention to uh, finding a next head coach. There's one guy that I want because the the name's already been mentioned or, or kind of mentioned everywhere. It's it's uh, Nate Oates of Alabama. Sean Miller from Xavier has been mentioned. Mark Pope of BYU. Scott Drew of Baylor. Uh, Wild card Brad Stevens, who's the Celtics president of basketball operations, has been thrown out there. Jay Wright, who, of course, was at Villanova, but then went to uh, CBS is there. Uh, Billy Donovan, Bulls coach, has been thrown out there by some. The one I want is I want Rick Pitino to come home. Come on, be, how great would that be? Rick Pitino going back to Kentucky, leaving St. John's. Go- because Kentucky needs a certain style of coach that looks a certain way, like Calipari, like Patino. That's why I don't, to me, Scott Drew or at Baylor doesn't fit, or Brad Stevens doesn't fit, Mark Pope doesn't fit. Billy Donovan, yeah, a little bit. Maybe Nate Oates, but those, Sean Miller, yeah. Sean Miller's greasy, so and they're greasy there, so maybe actually they'll, they'll be perfect for each other. Uh, but Calipari stepping down, that's uh, that's kind of a crazy news there in college basketball. Uh, Tavondre Sweat, ah, bad news for him. Texas defensive tackle, certainly maybe somebody that we talked to Rob Staten last week, Seahawks draft blog, about maybe the potential that he could be around, that the Seahawks would look at him. He's rated as the number three defensive tackle prospect in the uh, draft behind his teammate Brian Murphy and then Florida State's Brandon Fisk. Uh, history of parting issues at Texas. He had a bunch of meetings uh, with teams about these issues at Texas. And what did he do? What are we, a few weeks from the draft? Uh, he gets He's in jail and arrest for a DWI. So will we see now kind of the drop for him? Not as much as what Jalen Carter was, because Jalen Carter was like, I mean, people thought he was the be- he was the best player in the draft, and and then fell. But we'll see what the impact here for Tavondre Sweat will be, and how teams may take him off their board. And it's the DWI who say, well, everybody makes a mistake. It's the fact is that he's had this history of this in college, apparently, and then weeks before the draft, uh, he makes a mistake. A couple of last things before we get out of here. One, uh, I have joined a new club. I am the first male member of the Nips and Dips Club. Yeah, I'll repeat that. First member, first male member of Nips and Dips. And you're like, what the hell's Nips and Dips? Well, it's a cold plunging group. My wife and her girlfriends have been doing this cold plunging for like two months now and finally convinced me on Sunday to go out and do it. And you're like, well, cold plunging. I mean, I would assume everyone knows what it is, but if you don't, I'll tell you what it is. 
So these ladies, they get in their swimsuits and they go down to, there's a beach right down where we live by Golden Gardens in Ballard. It's right next to the Elks. It's actually, I think, just an excuse for them to go in the water and then go grab a drink at the Elks. They go in the water, in the sound, and I don't, I don't even know what temperature it is. It's freezing cold. And they sit in there for, I don't know, anywhere from three to like 13 minutes. And they cold plunge. And it's, you know, you go look up all the, it's good for your circulation, for sleep, for health benefits and all that. Again, I think it's an excuse for the Nips and Dips Club to just go over to the Elks and have a cocktail. But I did it for the first time. Not bad. Not bad. Stayed in there for three minutes. But freezing freaking cold. I mean, like where your skin is like on fire, that cold. Uh, onlookers wondering what is a pud Is that a white seal out there? I think I heard something. I don't know if that was a seal, but you know what I'm talking about. Uh, but did that. Uh, so my first plunge into the sound on Sunday as the first, and I feel a lot of pride about this, as being the first male member of the Nips and Dips Club. Just, I think there'll be a plaque at some point uh, for me, uh, cold plunging the sound, and then right afterwards, grabbing a drink there at the Elks. It's great times. Uh, of course, this is the best week. This is the best week in sports because the Masters is here, finally. You can hear the music. You can hear the birds, which I believe are fake. You can see, you can smell the azaleas. It's so green. It's finally here. We're going to have Andres Gonzalez is going to be on the show uh, today. Uh, you can hear that when it uh, gets released at, at 1 o'clock. Uh, Andres is going to join us, PGA Tour Live, Series XM Radio. He's going to break down and preview the Masters for us today. Uh, it's great. It's great content. Uh, we, we recorded it last night. You're going to enjoy it. Uh, Dre is a character. He tells some great stories. Uh, he, of course, we go in depth on all of the favorites, which, of course, is going to be Scotty Scheffler. It really does feel like this is Scotty Scheffler's tournament to lose. He has been red hot. He is on a run unlike anything we have seen since Tiger Woods. He is the 4-1 to one favorite. That's Tiger Woods-like. Rory's second at 10-1. to one, Rahm at 12-1. to one. Again, interview with Andres Gonzalez posted later today, actually posted right now. As you're watching or listening to this, it's up there right now at PuckSports.com, YouTube, Apple, Spotify, Amazon Music, wherever you find uh, your podcast. Also, big thanks to Synthetic Turf Northwest. Uh, you, I posted the video at Puck2040 on, on social media, on Twitter, X, and Instagram. It's up there. Go check it out. Uh, they, saw, they came out uh, last weekend and shot some video of it. You want to see what it looks like. Uh, the new lawn, the putting green, uh, go to Puck2040 on social media. You'll see it there. They put in a brand new lawn. It's great. Three-hole putting green ahead of the Masters. It's gorgeous. If you're thinking about doing this, do not hesitate. Do it. Trust me. You got a lawn. No more mud. No more dead grass. No more watering your lawn. If you have dogs, they're not going to track it in anymore. Uh, visit SyntheticTurfNorthwest.com today. Do it right now. And uh, also right now, they're offering a 0% interest for up to 18 months with no money down. Give them a call, 425-788-0718. And again, go check out the video that they did for my socials on uh, on X and Instagram, at Puck2040. You will not be disappointed. They are the hardest working group I have ever seen in my life. It's unreal. Also, speaking of the Masters and golf, Puck the Picker Masters pool is uh, here. It debuts. It's courtesy of Run My Polls. Uh, dot com, runmypools.com, excuse me, runmypools.com. Uh, uh, there'll be a link here. I'll put a link here at the bottom. Uh, click join pool and enter the code, and that code is N-L-A-T, N-L-A-T. Big thanks to Bill Sanders for reaching out, providing the idea. You just click on the link. Game is simple. You pick five golfers. We base the results on money earned. It's straightforward. It's simple. It's easy. No money to sign up. Completely free. Now, when you do go there and some Google ads pop up, do not hit the Google ads. Close the Google uh, ads out. You should not, do not have to enter any credit card information. I heard from a couple of people, hey, that's my credit card. It's because you hit one of the Google ads. Close it out. Uh, you do not have to enter anything, no credit card information at all. It's completely free. We've got three great prizes we're going to give away. First place, $150 John Howie Steak. Second place, $75 gift card to Georgetown Brewery. Third place, $50 gift card to Flat Stick Pub. All right, there it is. That's the Daily Puck Drop. Here at PuckSports.com, YouTube, Apple, Spotify, Amazon, 
music, wherever you find your podcast. On uh, Also on today's program, right now available is our interview with Andres Gonzalez, PGA Tour Live Series XM Radio, breaking down the Masters. Coming up later today at 1 o'clock, as we're going to release all of our other, other interviews, our regular guests at 1 o'clock. So daily puck drop at 10, interviews with our daily guests at 1 o'clock. So coming up at 1 o'clock today, Jim Duquette, MLB Radio Series XM. Jim uh, will talk all things baseball, the big storyline with all the injuries in baseball. And then Bill Kruger of Root Sports, Mariner's Perspective. It's brought to you by Rise Above Foundation. So stay tuned at 1 o'clock. Those will drop. We will talk to you tomorrow. As always, we promise to be better. Sure. No shoes, no, no dice. So. Would anybody like to smoke some pot? Yeah. I was born to love you. I was born to lick your face. I was born to rub you. But you were born to rub me first. What do you need my address for? We'd like to send out a mailer. <laughs> Mother of mercy, I don't speak Japanese! <laughs>